third place teams based on results uh, against the top two. So Faroe Islands already have a victory against the top two, Romania, so a victory here would be a big step forward for them. Nothing is guaranteed, whatever happens tonight, and it could be a big step forward, and it's the home side, Faroe Islands, who get us underway, attacking from left to right on your screens in the white and blue. And it's Ukraine in the yellow and blue, defending on the right-hand side. It's Chris O'Reilly here with you live in Torshavn and Faroe Islands in front of a sold-out crowd. The day after the victory over Romania, tickets for this game were sold out within minutes. And here they are. They've been waiting over a month for the big one. And it's Ellison uh, Shepigotu who's in the center, as expected, on the ball here, looking to unlock this Ukrainian defense who are going to have to contend with some unusual attacking play. They have some tricks up their sleeves, this Pharaoh side. And going with the standard approach, no 7v6 yet. I'm certain we'll see that at some point. Mitton laying it in, and the first shot is right down the center, and it's cleanly saved by Komok. And a good response on the other end, Ukraine straight into action. Uh, it's a good counter-attack and didn't allow the opposition to settle in. Uh, the first goal goes to the away side. And playing with three right-handers across the backcourt. This Faro's side with the number 30, who's usually a left-back, Trondor Mikkelsen, filling in in the right-back position. And they do have three left-handers if necessary, but Mikkelsen, Ellison is skipping out to and Mitton seem to be the starting trio whenever all three men are fit. Early yellow card dished out there to Goriga. He plays a key role not only in the left back position and attack, but also in the center block and defense there, starting alongside Chuchunak. And it's now Mitton who takes over in the center. Drifts out to the right-hand side. It's uh, aggressive defense, and that's what Ukraine will want to do early here. They do have a physical advantage in terms of height, and they'll want to make life as difficult as possible for this young side as early as possible. Nice movement there by Elias. Nice ball out to the left wing as well. And there's the opening goal of the game for the home side, Faroe Islands level. Ukraine looking to respond straight away. Ball down the right-hand side, and... It's much better transition defense from Faroe Islands this time, and Ukraine will have to slow it down. Oli Mutton and his brother Pauli also in the squad, also left back when necessary. But Oli just 17 years of age. There's good movement again, and a lot of the emphasis coming down the left-hand side from Ukraine, this time the ball popped into the line and it's Dimitro Chuchunuk who gets his first of the day. Both sides really pushing hard here, ball out to the right wing. Vestav Taigam sneaks that one in to the bottom right-hand corner. That's the first big save of the contest. And it's Pauli Jakobsen who gets the stop down the right-hand side. Ukraine pushing it just a little too hard. And the right-hander down to the right back position, trying to force the issue there. Tight angle for the shot and well covered by Jakobsen at the near post. And we'll see if Ukraine are able to keep up this pace throughout the entire 60 minutes. They're also a fairly young team. And there's a nice finish. And it's Mutun again. Who rides the challenge well and just keeps that right arm free. Happy to take the hit. All right, quick response. Down the left-hand side, Dimitri Goriga. Just standing up the defender there, who comes out just a little bit late there, Peter Crow. He's coming in in defense only. And with the pace that Ukraine are trying to play at, and trying to make it as difficult as possible for Faroe Islands to make those switches between defense and attack. If they can keep the smaller, speedy players in the defense, they'll feel they have a chance physically as well. A man down from Faroe Islands as Tice Horn took that hit just a little bit too hard.
Uh, Mickelson coming off, and they're going to go for the two line players here with the two minute suspension. Ty Soren seems to be fine, and Helgi Hoydal comes in as the second line player. And it's Chichunik who's off for the next two minutes. Ellison, uh, Shippagotu, ball out to the right wing, has to be recycled. Mid turn. And uh, Shippagotu will try and make things happen here. Beautiful movement by Elias. Ellison and Shippagotu. And Pharaohs have the lead. And once again, teasing the defense there and making life really, really difficult. The defender looking away momentarily and then realized the man had gone by. Won't be able to do that too often. I'll tell you that for nothing. Kuchenko comes into the attack, but the ball is given away. Ball into an empty net. Two goal lead to the home side. But they'll take that in these early moments. That's a poor turnover. And easier goal as he'll scored. Peter Crow will be playing almost exclusively in defense if recent form is to go by. Ball out to the left wing has to be recycled. Tuchenko waiting. And just have to be a bit more careful with the ball here, Ukraine. They're still down a man for the next 40 seconds. Rebound picked up. Oh, that's a much better finish. Good save in the first place with the rebound collected nicely by Chuchunuk. Zilchenko. We've got the two minute suspension. Chuchunuk still in play in the attack and collected that rebound nicely. Ball across to the left wing. There's space for the shot. Uh, popped over the keeper's head. And they're spreading the ball nicely. And Liver Mortensen. Happy to take the opportunity. There is a lot of focus in this team in creating opportunities out for the wings. And you can understand why, particularly with Vestav Tygum on the right-hand side, but Mortensen also delivering out in the left wing. A lot of shifting going around here for this Ukrainian backcourt in the opening minutes. Gorovy on the left-hand side now. And Turchenko looking to take on. Skip a go to, and it's a two minute suspension for Ellison and Ship a go to for the contact with the face. That seems a bit harsh. See what the replay suggests, and uh, well, that replay doesn't really help us. We're a bit blind to it, but it's a soft early two minute suspension for our Ship a go to. So, right after Ukraine get themselves back up to full strength and now a man up for the next two minutes. Turchenko picks it up, uh, that's good defending. Right out on top of him straight away, Tyus Horn. Line switch is faked and Turchenko waiting for the ball on the left hand side. He's got a bit of space, covered quickly, popped into the line and placed past the keeper. Good finish. Chuchunek with his second goal in quick succession. Now it's all about killing the play for a while for the home side. They're up, but they're a man down for just over a minute. And in the right back position calls Wilhelm Poulsen. Had a decent game against Ukraine in the previous meeting. Scored four goals against them. Line switch brings Poulsen into play. Hand up for passive play now. Mitun, what can he come up with? It's tipped by the defender on the way. And it's a soft save in the end for Komok. And now Ukraine happy to slow things down and set up once more. And Denisov is in the center. No more as a left winger, but taking over as a playmaker here for this team. They are missing. A couple of first choice players in Ukraine, but for the most part, still a lot of experience in this team. Now, that's a poor pass by Denisov, though, showing that maybe he should be a left winger after all. 
And Faroe Islands will happily take that. That's a second soft turnover. A pass to nobody in the end. And with that, Ellefson, oh, Shippagotu's back up into the action. And Faroe Islands back up to full strength. Oh, Shippagotu into Mikkelsen. Mitton, ball into the line, but nobody's home. And the referees bail them out there with the free throw. Approaching the 10 minute mark here, 11 goals between the sides already. It's a helter kelter. So, <laughs> can't even finish my sentence there as the shot is whipped in under the defender. Two goal lead again, and we're getting to see exactly what this team is made of. Great save down the other end, but couldn't be collected, and it's still a Ukraine ball. Right decision this time by Denisov. Hopefully we get to see the replay of Osha Pogotu's previous goal. Great shot under the arm of the defender. And he'll do that all day long if given the opportunity. Denisov drifting out to the right-hand side. Bring the wing into play. It's good movement here. There's going to be space on the line. And it comes off the defender's foot. Peter Crow. And the free throw. Line switch again. Denisov going in as a second line player. Hand up for passive play. Ball on the right hand side. Tight angle again. And the man goes down. Uh, looks in a fair bit of pain as well. That doesn't look good. That's Taras Minotsky. Not sure if his ankle was caught. He oh, landed on the foot of the defender. And really, you cannot blame. Mortensen for that at all. He was just standing his ground, an accidental roll, but thankfully Minotsky's back up on his feet already. That'll hurt, but it seems like he'll be okay. And uh, with that, Gorovyi will come back in into playmaker position. Uh, maybe it will be Denisov. Uh, so they switch it up completely, in fact, with Turchenko going out to the right back position. Denisov in the center and Goriga at left back. And an immediate turnover there. There was a passive play warning down the left hand side. Mortensen keeps it moving. And Faroe Islands happy to slow things down. Take control of possession. Two goals up here after 11 minutes. The home crowd been pretty happy. And Elias Selefsen. Well, Shippagotu said yesterday that the crowd can take a little while to warm up. There may be a little bit of sleep in the first half, but when they get going, they really get going, and it seems like they're being inspired here by the home side. Mitun looking for the outlet there, trying to drop it into the line, I think. And I'm happy to take the hit. It's incredible to see him, the way he's moving, and the physicality he already has at the age of 17. And here he is on the ball. Skips past the defender, that's well saved, but a free throw given once more. You have to wonder what Gennady Komak is thinking as well. The shots coming in from unusual angles. Oh, just like that, <laughs> through the legs of the keeper. And once again, it's Ellefson, oh, Shippagotu. He's scoring a few crackers here early tonight. Not wasting any time. And the crowd absolutely delighted. 20 years of age, currently at Severhof in Sweden, but moving to TV Kiel next season, and they've got themselves a good one there. Goriga, Denisov, Turchenko now back in his favorite left back position, but he can't do anything there. It's a real focal point of this Ukrainian attack, and something that at the moment, after a shaky start, Faroe Islands are managing to contain pretty well. A lot of pressure on that left-hand side of the Faroese defense with Peter Crow and Mikkelsen in there alongside him. Denisov trying to force the issue. The shot's not great and a counter-attack opportunity. Good movement there. And it's Mikkelsen all the way through. Easy finish for him. Faroe Islands, four goals to the good. Ukraine looking to respond straight away. 
But the coach, Vakislav Lokman, has other ideas. He's called a timeout. Ukraine playing themselves into trouble there, playing into the opposition hands, and it's Faroe Islands, four goals to the good. Let's listen in. frustration in the Ukrainian timeout they are playing into the home side's hands with the pace a little bit of uh, headless chicken handball there at times there's the young Faroe Islands team playing with a lot of composure I saw them in training yesterday and despite being on the eve of what is probably their biggest game in history they looked so so calm and composed and relaxed about everything that may change in the second half but at the moment everything flowing pretty smoothly for the home side ball into the line is a very nice one tricky pass in but it's put away and it's Dimitri Ilchenko great pass in there as well Andrei Akimenko who I mentioned before is, uh, had a great season with Dinamo Bucharesti in the Romanian League and the EHF Champions League. Nitun trying to make things happen. They're dropping the shoulder as well, and the referees saw the high contact. Uh, Dimitri Goriga fell for it. Nitun using uh, his low center of gravity, you could say, to his advantage there, trying to draw in the defender and looking from it, the contact with the head, perhaps. Riga fell for it, and he's off for the next two minutes. Which has a pretty big effect, not just in defense for this Ukrainian side, but also in the attack. As we're seeing already, they've got a strong starting team, but a little bit lacking in options in the backcourt. Two line players in there. Mitun, oh, it's stolen. Really good steal as well. Igor Turchenko, the man who popped in with the right hand and gets a valuable steal. And Ukraine for the first time this evening, happy to slow things down a little bit, take a few seconds off the clock. Denisov. Going in at left back, not going to take on a uh, That's a good pass inside as well. Drew in the defender, simple stuff. Ukraine, despite being a man down there, an excellent set piece. And Peter Crow just being caught asleep. And all the space down the right hand side. And Oli Mitun brings up the 10 goal mark at the quarter hour mark for Faroe Islands. Nicely worked uh, using all the space left behind with that two minute suspension for Goriga. We'll see how the Faroese defense match up this time. Uh, a bit of a wake up call for them. Ball on the right hand side. Referee's happy to play on, saying there was no foul. The goalkeeper's back in now. Ellison, uh, Shippagot too, he's got some space, he just evades the keeper, and he's having a stormer here. Four goal lead restored. And that's poor defending, you have to say as well, it's a change up in goal. As uh, young Nazar Chudinov comes into the fray, uh, caught out immediately, fourth goal in this contest for Ellison, uh, Shippagot too.
Empty switch brings Denisov in. And finally a left-hander in that backcourt. And the shot is a poor one. Good defending, you have to say. And the keeper, Paulson, still had to be in the right place, but a touch off the defence helped it. And you do feel that Ukraine are feeling a bit flustered here. It happens. They've come up against this Faroe East side two years ago right here and beat them by a single goal. And I think could have counted themselves lucky to come away with that. Ball out to the right. Oh, it's unfortunate. Out to the left wing roll. That was a beautiful pass, and I don't think anyone was expecting it. You see here, flings it across just a little bit off target, you could say, but maybe Liver Mortensen could have done better with that. He'll definitely be thinking that about that one for a moment or so. A glorious opportunity goes astray. Kuchenko goes into the center. Denisov lays it off to Kuchenko. That's a great pass into the line, and that is one area that's creating a lot of opportunities, but they can't score because Paulson's there again. A ball down the left side, great work. And it's really taking its toll on the transition defense play for this Ukrainian side. The ball in in the first place, beautifully worked, but a poor shot, it has to be said. And Akimenko, the right wing, who snuck in there and created the opportunity for himself. In the end, it cost his side a goal. Goriga. Back in, Denisov, eyes off the ball, can he get one there? He does, and uh, got away with that one, I think. Denisov almost let the ball slip, and in the end, that moment of chaos turned into a goal. Ukraine won't mind, though. A ship go to, that's a free throw for him. Nice little drop of the shoulder there, and the defender probably would have felt he could have done better there. Polson back in at right back. And Mitun takes over in the center for now. And the Ukrainian defender is still stepping out, looking to stop them early. Ball out to Polson. Little high with the pass, but he gets it back. The hand up for passive play. Oh, go to uh, takes one step too many. You can see looking for the outlet. Uh, hopped up to try and pass it in the end. Took his fourth step and well spotted by the referees. All down the right-hand side. And that's good defending. And once again, we're seeing Turchenko out in the right-back position. It feels like a bit of a waste. And the way he is able to shoot, he's not going to be able to find opportunities for his, himself out there. And it's Goriga. Now in the center, he's able to shoot from outside as well. And it looks really uncomfortable out there on the right-hand side. And it's Ilya Bliznyuk, the only out-and-out -out right back they have in the squad today, Ukraine. And again, turnover comes from Denisov. Faroe Islands down the left-hand side again. Could inside Mortensen, needs one more pass, but well covered in the fence. Ivor Mortensen has a smirk on his face after he uh, saw the opportunity. But the space swallowed up by that Ukrainian defense as they came back. But after 20 minutes of play, a four-goal lead to the home side. Things going according to plan for them. And they're well worth it as well. And they make it five. Oli Mitun. <laughs> it's incredible. Mutan and Asha Pagotu making things happen there, looking for an attacker foul. And the referees say no. And in fact, there's a warning dished out to Tice Horn for flopping there. Not happy with that decision. A great movement again. And proving to be a nightmare for the Ukrainian center block. And we've got just under 10 minutes a bit left to go in this first half. A oh, great ball into the line and a smart finish as well. Ty Sword, one moment being told off for flopping. The next down in the attack and gets himself his first goal of the day. And with that, it's 14 9. 
Now the scoreboard back up to scratch. Had a momentary pause there. Gorovyi, one of the more established playmakers, back in in the center of this attack now. Goriga waiting to pick the ball up, and there's a lot of movement here, but they're not really going anywhere, Ukraine. And again, Turchenko looking a bit out of place. Goriga, 10 meters out, looking for the pass. It's a, a bit of a wild one. The hand's still up for passive play. There can't be many passes left. Just four after the warning, I think they're telling them they've got one pass left to come from this free throw. Uh, Turchenko back in at left back will have to take on the shot. Turchenko from 10 meters out. Oh, it's a wicked shot just wide of that right hand post. And Ukraine were looking for the corner throw, but there was no touch on it from the defenders. And just look at that scoring efficiency difference, 88% for Faroe Islands. Well, I'd be surprised if they can keep this going for the entire 60 minutes, but at the moment, things going swimmingly. And Peter Bredsdorf Larsen has decided he wants to take a timeout and have a word with his team. Not satisfied with a five-goal lead. Faroe Islands are going to go 7-6 v six and really try and hammer down on this Ukrainian defense. Uh, having seen them play 7-6 v six on a few occasions and also in training yesterday, it is a sight to behold uh, with Elias Ellison, Oshipagurtu in the center, doing whatever he wants in there. And it's going to be a tough few minutes for Ukraine. Let's see if they can match it. Uh, Kjartan Johansson coming in in the right back position as well to offer a bit of width. And here he is, looking for a bit of space himself. Keeps the ball moving though. There is a space ball out to the right wing, has to be recycled. Ashipagertu, that's a decent opportunity, but well covered. Goriga got the touch on it, and it's out for a corner throw. Here we go again. And that's a bit of a wild shot, a heavy challenge as well. Empty net to shoot into, and that's a good goal. And that's going to be a big, big boost for Ukraine. Not only did they manage the 7v6 beautifully, but they got a cheap goal out of it as well. And the Faroe Islands will persevere with it. And they'll have to be a bit more careful with their shooting. And there is that side of it when he goes 7v6 the danger down the other end can make you a little bit hesitant all out to Mortensen they keep it moving they have got great control in the center but another shot that's a little bit too high this time the keeper should get back in time indeed he has but that's two shots over the top by Oshipagotu and has had the opposite of the desired effect for Faroe Islands. Gorovi in the left back position now, the playmaker drops it into Goriga, who's happy to take control in the center. Turchenko still out there on the right hand side, doing whatever he can, but that's a poor pass by Goriga. And all of these players just not in their right positions, and the coach looking perplexed and frustrated, and that's going to be. I thought it was going to be a penalty for the shove in the back, but nothing given by the French referees. And we go again. Gariga from long range. That's an absolute cracker from 10 meters out. Dimitri Gariga picks it up at the halfway line. One bounce, locks and loads. And nothing the keeper can do about that. A five goal lead cut down to three all of a sudden. And it's Oli Mutton who comes into the center. And for the first time, we're hearing the small collection of Ukrainian fans let their voices be heard. 
Well, that's a bit over aggressive there. The defending referees happy to just give the free throw. They'll set up again. Five minutes left on the clock in this first half. Oh, should we go through? Great pass inside and kept out. Good stop. But a penalty, I think, was the call. Couldn't hear the referee's whistle there, but everything stopped. And it's pretty clear as well after they didn't make the last call, maybe making up for it this time. And the penalty to be taken by Elias Ellefson. Uh, Shippagotu takes it once, uh, places it past the keeper. No bother on him. After missing the last two shots, he delivers for the first time today from the seven meter line. Right between the left arm and leg of Chudinov. Fairweilands back in the scoreboard. Four goals to the good again. And Gorofi back in uh, momentarily in his favorite playmaker position. Goriga really wants to be in their center. Kurchenko keeps the ball moving. It's good movement here. But is there space for a shot down the center? Ball into the line. Maybe not the right decision. A bit out of position, but well worked in the end to get the penalty. You can see two men around him who managed to fend off the first challenge. And in the end, Dimitra Chuchunak gets his side a penalty. So he went a good 25 minutes without a penalty. Then we got two in a row. Now to take this one will be Andrei Akimenko, the right winger. Against Jakobsen. Oh, it's kept out. Pauli Jakobsen. Makes a big penalty stop, and in the end, the penalty wasn't great. Tried to slide it past on the spin, but Jakobsen kept that right foot just within reach. And a big momentum shifter. Faroe Islands persevering with the 7v6 attack. Two line players in there. Mitton, Oshipagotu thinks about down the left-hand side, lays it off to the right. And there's no space there for Vestov Tygum. You can see that Johansson is trying to find him. But Vestov Tygum with no space, and as he tried to wriggle his way free, he was getting a bit too much attention from Yevgen Shuk. Oshibagot too at the near post, and as well saved. It's been a good goalkeeping switch for Ukraine bringing Nazar Chudinov in. Much younger of the keepers, hasn't played too many games. That's a wild shot down the right-hand side. Left and wide of the goal. Elias, that's a high challenge on him. The referees not hesitating to dish out the two-minute suspension. And yeah, just a slip of the hand. And it's dangerous stuff. Denisov gets his marching orders. And that's the last thing Ukraine would have wanted for these last two minutes, 20 seconds of the first half. There'll be a man short for the most of it. And with that, Farrell Island's happy to go 6v5 and bring their goalkeeper back in. Creates a bit more space as well, which I think suits this team more. You see here Mitton thinking about going down the right himself. He's got the space for it. He just needs the angle as a right-hander. Nicholson drifting in as a second-line player. And there's the space, and Mitton's free. Oh, unfortunate for him. Had the keeper beat, but bouncing it through his legs onto the crossbar. Almost too much time to think about it in the end. And well covered by the keeper. He forced the bounce shot onto the crossbar. And with that, Coach Lochman is a happy camper once again. 90 seconds left on the clock in this first half. Four goals between the sides. And Ukraine with a good opportunity here. Take a few seconds off the clock and a long-range shot. Goriga. And that's a cheap one from a Faroese perspective, but exactly what Ukraine needed. There was the warning right from the start of the game. Those left backs from long range. And there's the space. It's going to be a, probably a two-minute suspension as well. No? Goal. 
nonetheless for Elias Ellison are shipping her to. You see a heavy, heavy challenge on him with the shooting arm. And the crowd with a moment of panic for a second because uh, you see bad things happening to players when a uh, shooting arm gets hit like that. But he's nonplussed. And Faroe Islands, four goals to the good again. 30 seconds left in the first half. Ukraine will be back up to full strength in a few seconds. Can they get a goal here before that happens? They cannot. We'll be back up to full strength now. Turchenko, and he lets it slip. And a chance on the break here, Faroe Islands. Ball down the right-hand side. Vest of Tigum. Five-goal lead restored. Five seconds left in the first half. One last shooting opportunity, perhaps. Shook goes down the left and tries to make something happen. But the buzzer will go. There it is. The first half is over. Faroe Islands leading Ukraine 17-12. Uh, they're halfway through this battle and well, well on course to two huge points. They have been the better side overall. Ukraine right at the beginning trying to push the pace, which may not have been the right decision for them. They kind of played into the hands of their hosts and with poor turnovers just like that, which really, given the the fact that these players are training together pretty much every day, the majority of the Ukraine squad all playing for HC Motor. These things can't really be excused. The occasion may be getting the better of them. Uh, the young Faroe Island squad living up to the hopes of a nation here. Here's your halftime statistics. Faroe Island 17, Ukraine 12. Their shooting efficiency has dropped from that Atmospheric 88%, it's 68% uh, at the moment, but still very, very strong. 57, not bad from Ukraine. They improved towards the end of the half, but there's the key stat, the technical faults. Just three for the home side, seven for Ukraine. That has been a, a real killer for them alongside the three two-minute suspensions. Uh, we'll see who the top scorers are. No prizes for guessing who's leading the way for the home side at the moment. It's Elias Ellison or Shepagotu, who's been the outstanding shooter for this team so far today. Uh, the packed crowd here in Torshavn, 1,700 of them, the vast majority having a great time. Top three goal scorers for Ukraine, Koriga with three, Juchonik on the line with three as well, Denisov with a pair, but nothing really coming from there. Talisman Turchenko who's been stuck out on the right-hand side. And there, Elias leading with six goals. Oli Mitton beside him with four. And Hawk on Vestav Tigum out in the right wing with a pair of goals. So it's Farrow Islands in the driving seat at the moment. We'll take a 10-minute break. And I'll be back with you for the second half.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Torshavn. We're just a couple of minutes away from the second half of Faroe Islands versus Ukraine. Our highlight game in round five of the men's EHF Euro 2024 qualifiers. And at the break, it's a five goal lead, 17 12 in favor of Faroe Islands, which will not just be a huge step for them if they pull off the victory towards reaching EHF Euro, but we could begin talking about goal difference as well. What an exciting topic, but that could be an important topic towards the end of this evening because if there is a case of a three-way tie between second, third and fourth place in the group, which would theoretically happen if Faroe Islands win tonight, and then Ukraine go and beat Romania on Sunday in their final group game with Faroe Islands failing to get a point against Austria on Sunday, then we would have all three teams on four points having beaten each other twice and losing against each other twice. Then it goes to the overall goal difference between the three of them to decide second, third and fourth. And at the moment, Faroe Islands are leading into this game. Faroe Islands had the worst of those goal differences, but the lead they have at the moment changes things around quite a bit. So we may talk a little bit more about that, depending on how the second half goes. But still a long way to go in this contest. And if you miss the first half, then you miss an incredible performance from the home side. They really set the tempo. And for such a young team, played with so much composure as well, which is the key thing missing from the Ukrainian performance in the first half. A team which, given their circumstances, in the last couple of years, you have to cut them a lot of slack, but the majority of this team, 10 of the 15 players playing in Germany, nine of them all playing for HC Motor Zaporozhye, who have relocated for now to Dusseldorf in Germany and be playing in the second Bundesliga as well as the European League. They've had a lot of time together. So we'll see if they're able to find a bit of cohesion in the second half. And certainly, they will come out Looking a much better team, that's for sure. And they'll be looking to cut down a few of that five-goal lead as quickly as possible. But very motivated, quickly out onto court. That was maybe their downfall in the first half, coming out a bit too hard. But a few changes, it seems, in the backcourt as Bliznyuk, the only right back in the team, is coming in. He was more of a right winger back in his day. Not the biggest right back, but not that that really matters in a game like this. And we also have Gorovyi coming back into the center as we get this second half underway. It's Chris O'Reilly here with you live in Torshavn in this packed Hull in a Halsey. 1,700 people packed into this arena. They are getting a new arena built for 2025, which will have 2,700 people, which is pretty incredible. That's going to be 5% of the entire population packing into games for this team. But I'll tell you what, they're worth it. A uh, good break down the right-hand side, but a brilliant save. Paul Jakobsen. Jakobsen picking up where he left off in the first half, that's for sure. 38% save rate for him in the first half, winning the goalkeeper battle clearly. And it was a good move by Bliznyuk, but... A shot well covered at the near post by the young keeper. Jakobsen, like a lot of these players, just 20 years of age. Had a decent game in the reverse fixture as well. 32% saving for him then. Asha Bagutu off to Mitten. The shot down low, and that's well saved. But the referee's not happy with the challenge on Oli Mitten as he came across. And they give the two-minute suspension and a late free throw. Uh, one referee seemed to pay no attention to it, but Dmitry Tichonik is off for the next two minutes. And a man-up situation for Faroe Islands. Mikkelsen coming in in the left-back position. He'll drop in on the line after laying off that pass, and now it's two and two. Two backcourt players, two line players. Mikkelsen helping out when necessary. Mitton down the right. He'll be the target here if there's a little bit of space for him or the ball popped into the line. It's good defending from Ukraine so far. 
Asha Pagotu looking out for that pass. Mitton in the end takes on the shot, as expected, and delivers the goal, as expected. Barrow Island, six goals to the good. And Farrow Island's going with the 5-1 defense here with Ellison. Ah, oh, Shepagotu out on the top. We need to put a bit of pressure on the passing for Ukraine, which, as we saw with seven technical faults in the first half, has been an issue for them. Goriga laying it off to Bluznyuk. And Denisov, who's now in his more usual left wing position, lays it off, and it's a good shot into the bottom left-hand corner. Nice work overall, creating a bit of space for Vitaly Gorovy to run into. And that's Ukraine's first goal of the second half. Oh, beautiful stuff. Alison Ashipagatu floating in through defenders. Just look at this again. Just leans in, hops up, and stays floating as he somehow releases a rocket of a shot as well. Well, Shippagotu continues to deliver the goods. Six goals in the first half for him. That's his first of the second leading scorer by a long way in this contest so far. And he remains out of the top of that 5-1. Luzhnyuk, going off the pass. Goriga, he's almost in trouble there. He's still laid off, and the referees are going to put the hand up for passive play in a moment, but Ukraine back up to full strength in the meantime, so the keeper comes back in. Shot down low, and saved by Jakobsen. And it's a late two-minute suspension given to the Faroese defender. Let's have a look and see who the guilty party is there. And in the meantime, Pauli Jakobsen delivers another save. And that was Tice Horn. And dragged down the attacking player where Peter Crow gets a two-minute suspension. You saw it was between the two of them. And he stuck his leg out there, Peter Crow. He is the guilty party in the referee's eyes. And so he's off for the next two minutes. Hoydal in on the line again. Mitton. Oh, should go to. Mitton coming in at pace. Hoydal trying to create some space for himself or for his teammates on the line. He's broken through, shot down low, free throw given. The dexterity in the arms of Mitton and Asha Pagotu are incredible to see live. They're really willing to take on a shot or a pass from any angle. A hand up for passive play here, so they're going to have to get motoring, Pharaoh. All laid off to the wing, long range shot, almost catches the keeper off guard, caught the defenders off guard, that's for sure. But Nazar Chudinov was equal to it. And Goriga, happy to slow things down, Ukraine, a man up for the next 45 seconds or so. So they can take their time and build up this play. Might create some space for themselves. Goriga. A space here for Bluznyuk, couldn't really make up his mind. Riga in the center again, Bluznyuk down the right this time, makes up his mind, but he's denied once more. Pauli Jakobsen on fire at the start of this second half. Three big saves for him, two of them coming against Bluznyuk. And I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the hook in a moment. He's coming at right back, the only out-and-out left-hander in the backcourt. Just hasn't worked out for him. And Pauli Jakobsen bailing his team out there. They'll be back up to full strength in a moment without conceding a goal. Mitton. Oh, should we go to Mitton again? Nice little movement between the two of them. Ball out to the left wing. Mortensen, huge space for him. And Livern Mortensen brings up the 20-goal mark for Faroe Islands. It's their largest lead of the contest. Seven goals up. And the big worry, from a Faroe Islands perspective, would have been how they will deal with this early third quarter pressure that Ukraine were likely to put on them. But really, it hasn't come at all. Not yet, anyway. Well, that's much better, showing just how easily they can score when things go right for Ukraine. 
Dimitri Goriga, 10 meters out. He's got a huge, huge shot on him. Him and Turchenko. We just haven't been able to unlock Turchenko, but if Goriga keeps delivering goals like that, they will have a chance. They just need to keep the passing crisp and not try to overcomplicate things. That's been their problem at times today. Mitton, that pass isn't great, but claimed well. Asha Bagotu go for the shot! The blind shot in the end. Beautiful angle with the camera there to see what he was thinking in real time. And a good response down the other end. Ukraine giving as good as they get at the moment. That's a heavy challenge on Alison Ashipagotu and a little grimace as he goes down there. He's had his injury problems this season. But at the moment, looking in incredible form. And there you could see maybe he was after that shot there and the collision, but he seems to be moving okay. Mito now taking on the defense and re. <laughs> you gotta love it. It's beautiful to see. The speed is incredible, the movement incredible, and good counter attacking down the end from Ukraine, who are giving, as I said, as good as they get at the moment. They did this at the start of the first half as well. They really pushed the pace. And it's delivering a few quick goals for them here, but how long can they keep it going? Juchunak there just being torn apart by Oli Mitton. Here he goes again, Mitten. This time denied by Chichanik, who must be just frustrated by all of this. Movement down the left-hand side. Good dish out of a pass there to keep the ball moving. That's key, ball out to the right wing. Vestav Tigum. He's not gonna miss from there. And that all came from that little dish pass out by Elias in the beginning. And they kept the ball moving kept it live and kept searching for that space, which in the end came in the right wing. Seven goal lead restored. And this second half ticking along nicely from a home side perspective. Difficult angle for the shot there, rebound picked up and saved. Jakobsen again. There's no getting past this man at the moment, Pauli Jakobsen. 20 years of age, he gets a little this bump there from his fellow keeper, Nick Satchwell. And both men have been heroes at different points for this team over the last few years. Satchwell, the man who made the last save in the victory over Romania last month. And if you're wondering about the name, Nick Satchwell doesn't sound very Faroese. Well, it isn't necessarily. Nick Satchwell was a goalkeeper for the Great Britain team up until 2015, who was the third choice goalkeeper at the Olympics in 2012, the 15th man in a 14 man squad. So he just missed out on getting to represent Great Britain at London 2012 Olympics, but moved here in 2015 and hasn't looked back. The Faroese Federation in 2018 asked him if he wanted to represent them, which he said was an absolute honor and he couldn't say no to. It's become his home, even though he's playing his club handball in Iceland at the moment, as we see another goal by Alison uh, Shipagotu. And a good steal as well. And it comes off the foot of Mitton. Chance on the left-hand side for Ukraine. And it's a good finish. And it's Zakhar Denisov, who seems to be doing a lot better for his team out in his usual left wing position. Good finish for him. And the referees actually say the Ukraine took a timeout, so that goal won't count. Well, that's a disaster for Ukraine, isn't it? Let's listen in.
Well, the tone a lot calmer this time from Ukraine in comparison to their timeout in the first half where they were losing their heads a little bit. And with an eight goal deficit, 20 minutes left to go, still a long way in this contest. It's not over yet, but even if they were to lose this one, Ukraine, goal difference is potentially crucial for them. They cannot afford to lose by eight or more. They want to cut down the deficit as much as possible. Every single goal counts in the race to the men's EHF Euro 2024 in Germany next January. And if Faroe Islands were to qualify for that, well, that would be absolutely astonishing. Nice ball on the left-hand side, and that's straight out of the timeout. And Dimitri Goriga. We've seen what he's capable of from long range, but there, showing his silky smooth footwork and a nice little spin past the keeper. He's got a bit of everything. And the onus now is on Faroe Islands to keep up the good work they've been managing for the last 40 minutes of handball. Uh, that shot wide to the left, a decent opportunity for Mitun. But the keeper not needing to get a touch on it, it was wide to the left. Rodriga drifting down the right-hand side, the ball is stolen. I've seen that far too often from this team. Pass out to Mortensen on the counter-attack. And he delivers another one, Liver Mortensen. Having a storm around in that left wing. Maybe one of the positions that over the last couple of years hasn't been the strongest for Faroe Islands, but Mortensen is really having a game and delivering when he has the opportunity for this team. A nice work on the counter-attack, Andrei Akimenko. Popping up at the goal there, the right winger. As I mentioned in the first half, has had a fantastic season with Dinamo Bucharesti. Playing in the Champions League. And that shot well covered at the far post and a chance on the break for Ukraine. This is where they're at their most dangerous. Uh, and another one snuck in at the near post. And it's Goriga. That's two quick fire goals. And Ukraine reminding Faroe Islands that they're not going to walk away with this one. There's still a long way to go. The deficit cut to six and uh, a timeout quickly taken by Peter Bredsdorf Larson. And that seems like the smart thing to do for Faroe Islands right now. And take a little bit of the momentum away from Ukraine that they've built up in the last couple of minutes. The 7v6 didn't work 100% perfectly in the first half. We saw two shots over the crossbar by our Shibagotu. But then when Mitun came into the center, which he is right now, that seemed to work pretty well for them. And uh, Shertan Johansson in and right back again. So Hoydal on the line nearest to us. Ball out to Johansson. He takes on the shot. Uh, it wasn't a great shot in the end. Uh, kept in play by the keeper. Was in two minds there, I think, a little bit. Johansson, whether to take on the shot or not. And in those situations, you know, as here coach is saying, if you see the gap in a 7v6 like that, you go for it. If you're in the left or right back positions, and leave the playmaker to do the thinking. Goriga will make way in the empty switch. On the left-hand side here, he's got a bit of space to run into, lays it off instead. And Akimenko in it right back. It's something that I thought made perfect sense for this team right now. We'll see what he can do. Cuts inside, he's got good movement, that's for sure. Ball down the left wing, Denisov. Oh, it's a poor shot. Try to sneak it past the keeper at the near post. Zakhar Denisov. And Pauli. And Jakobsen, I'm not sure he got a touch on that, but he didn't need to. He forced the winger on the inside shot. A bit of a let off there for Faroe Islands. And we'll see what they can come up with now in the 7v6 situation. Ball out to the wing. Best of Tigam. Decent angle for him. And he doesn't need much more than that. Seven goal lead again for the home side. Goriga. Ball into the line. It's a real battle in there on the line. Referees just giving the free throw, happy with what they saw there, nothing more than a free throw. And I mentioned in the first half that 
There's a lot of focus on the wings here for Faroe Islands, and both of them today, Mortensen on the left-hand side, Vestav Tygum on the right-hand side, delivering with pretty much every opportunity they get. Goriga, Akimenko, Goriga, thinking about letting that one loose, but really him playing in the left or the center back position does slow things down a little bit. Akimenko with a standing shot and showing us why he's a winger. And there's still full credit to Paula Jakobsen. Stood strong in the center there and just got his body in the way. He's having an absolute stormer. And that is a, a lovely moment. Mitton thinking about going, but it decides to keep the ball moving instead. Line players waiting for a ball out to the left wing, recycled. Asha Bagotu, that's wide to the left. And again, although he's dictating the play nicely, when it comes to shooting in these 7v6 situations, it just hasn't worked out for him. Shooting in every other situation is perfect for Asha Bagotu, but in that position, there's something about it just not clicking. It offers a little glimpse of hope for Ukraine. In comes the left wing as a second line, but not needed. That just distracted the defense just a little bit. And created the opportunity for Goriga to step inside, beat the first man, and sent the keeper the wrong way. And that brings up the 20 goal mark for Ukraine. And with that, we're into the final quarter of this contest. It's flown by. It feels like the last 15 minutes is going to be a little bit slower. Ah, nice attempt. Tried to spin it past the keeper. But Chudunov stands strong, makes a big save. And it's good transition defense there from Faroe Islands. They've been caught out on a few occasions today by the counter-attacking of Ukraine. With the right idea. A great stop by Nazar Chudinov. And Turchenko back in at right back. And I tell you what, I mean, for a man who has had a storming season for Motor, you just have to look at his stats in the European League 97 goals. You wonder why he's not being given the opportunity to play in his favorite left back position. Goriga is doing well, but Kutrachenko offers something else. Uh, the good ball into the line, and Jakobsen not being lobbed today. Skip pass across to Vestav Tigum, keeps it moving. Asha Pagotu thinking about what to do in the sides in the end to slow things down and allow Mitun into the fray once again. Johansson continues in that right back position here just to keep the ball moving at the moment and allow the two men of center and left back to do the business. And that's a bit of inside defending, but a free throw is all that's given. Hand up for passive play. Oh, should we go to? Will he come up with something himself here? He'll try to ball into the line and the challenge on him. Sees the referees give the free throw. Goes down low with the shot, uh, well saved. And Chudinov, he's done his homework, that's for sure. And he's responding well now to these shots. When he first came in, he found himself a little bit flabbergasted by it all. And he's worked his way into the contest and made some very important saves. And Denisov back in in the center back position. Drifts out to the right and trying to force the issue there, runs straight into the defender and gets himself a free throw. A line switch, but nothing coming from it. And Turchenko will finally get an opportunity to do something in the left back position. Goriga in the center. Turchenko is at a tight angle, has to keep the ball moving, and a hand is up for passive play. Goriga with the shot, and Goriga with the goal. Uh, he really does make it look so, so easy at times. Now with that, 
It's a five goal game. Ukraine creeping back into contention here. And the atmosphere getting a little bit nervy. And you'd understand why. 11 minutes left on the clock, just five goals between the sides. Ukraine have responded very well to going eight down. Mitun. Oh, to He's through on the right hand side. Where did that gap open up? Who knows, but who cares if you're a Faroe Islands fan? Oh, that was brilliant work. Brilliant work by Sherton Johansson, who came in from the right back position as a second line player and just held on for his dear life. That created the space down the right hand side as Elias Ellison R. Shippagotu gets his 10th goal of the game. Goriga. No one to play with. And uh, Turchenko once again being absolutely wasted, if you don't mind me saying, in the right back position. Will he get an opportunity here to shoot? Yes, he will. That's <laughs> showing us what he's capable of. No angle there for the shot, and he unleashed an absolute rocket. There was only one place he could have put that ball, and he fired it in there off the far post. Turchenko finally gets himself on the scoreboard in this second half. And there's a man down for Faroe Islands. And uh, not sure exactly what that is. Hopefully nothing more than a bit of cramp. And he's back up on his feet there, uh, Tyus Horn. And a bit of a smile on his face, so hopefully it's nothing too serious for Horn, but it's such an important player in defense and on the line in attack. So hopefully he can uh, shake it off. And Tyus Horn. Two goals so far today. There hasn't been too much delivery into the line players. Tyson Horn with a couple of goals. Helge Hoydal, he's been uh, doing a fine job there in the line as well, but it's all about creating opportunities and distracting the defenders as the men in the backcourt get the business done. Mitun, oh, he's clean through, and uh, just a free throw. Oh, it's incredible. Look at his body position here. Absolutely phenomenal. And both men, Mitun and Oshipagotu, capable of doing that. And the way they managed to keep their composure in midair as well and unleash shots like that. The referee is going over the table there. I think there might have been an issue with the, the scoreboard and the time. But looks like it matches up with the TV graphics. Final 10 minutes of this contest. Five goals between the sides. And as I mentioned earlier, depending on how things go on Sunday, it could come down to goal difference. So every single goal counts here, not just the victory. That's going to be a two-minute suspension. And that's been a two-minute suspension that's been coming for a while. For the second time in this second half, Dimitra Chuchunik holds on. And Mitton breaks clean through once more. This time, no goal for him, but he gets the suspension. And Faroe Islands, a man up for the next two minutes. Ball out to the wing. Best of Tygum all alone out there. He has to score, he does. Keeper did well to get a touch on it. But Best of Tygum will not be denied today. Uh, Vestov Tygum, who's off to Fuxa Berlin next season. The other big Faroese summer signing for the Bundesliga next season. And he's had a brilliant campaign with Skanderborg, Aarhus in the European League as well. Benny Sof on the right-hand side. And uh, freestyling a little bit there. Zakhar Denisov, you can't fault his willingness to make things happen for this team. He's a left winger who's out in the right back position at the moment because nothing else seems to be working for them. But the right decision, I would say, to finally give an opportunity to Tur Turchenko in the center or left back positions. At the moment, he's in the center. Him and Goriga can score goals so, so easily. Goriga with the in-flight pass across, beautifully worked. And that really came out of nowhere. Goriga 
defending that one really nicely. And a good finish as well. Artemenko with his first of the contest out in the left wing. Marsha Pagotu, the vest of Taigam, was recycled. Marsha Pagotu again, thinking about what to do with these defenders. Pops it out to Mito, and he's through. Keeper gets a touch on it again, but he can't keep it out, and that's the key thing. And Oli Mito, 17 years of age. Mito playing with the composure of a 27-year-old with three Champions Leagues under his belt. Seven goals today from the 17-year-old. He, alongside Asha Pagotu, playing for Seva Hof in Sweden, joined them this season. It's a matter of time how long he'll be there until the big, big clubs come after him. And that's a penalty given, the shot. Found a way past the keeper, but landed inside Turchenko before he took on the shot. We'll see a good replay of it there. Foot landed inside. The penalty earned. The man who earned it, Igor Tur Turchenko, will take it himself, facing Pauli, who saved one already in this game, and he saves the second one. Pauli Jakobsen. Two penalty saves from two. And how crucial could that be by the end of this game, by the end of this week? Big smile on his face. 14 saves today. Ridiculous stuff from the 20-year-old. And yes, I'm mentioning the ages of these players over and over again because it has to be mentioned. And there goes the 17-year-old again to win a penalty down the other end. Big clap on the back from Helgi Hoydal. He created the space. And that quick movement, and uh, Mitton reacted perfectly. Great interplay between the two. And it's Ellison, Asha Bagotu to take the penalty, and he whips that one into the top left-hand corner. Faroe Islands have their mojo back. There's seven goals to the good. They don't stop those top bins from Asha Bagotu. Just over five minutes left to play. So we can almost safely say the Faroe Islands are going to claim the victory here. But it's all about how many goals they win by at this stage uh, for Ukraine, how many goals they can contain. Well, that's a turnover there. 50-50 call, you'd say. Oh, Shepagotu happy to slow things down. They'll set up once again. Mitton strolls onto the court again. Nicholson in at right back and much like Johansson before him. There is a vehicle to keep the ball moving as the two boys in the center do the business. And that's well saved. Rebound picked up by Vestov Tygum. And they'll get to reset again. No threat of passive play for the moment. Seven goals up, final five minutes here. One more. It'll be a big boost for them. Opportunity on the line. It was good movement there by Mickelson. Mitten. Ellison Shepago to goes for the shot down low. Rebound picked up by Vestov Tigum. Eight goal lead for Faroe Islands. They've matched their largest lead of the game. They've found another gear here in the last 10 minutes. And Ukraine looking a bit beaten at the moment. They cannot give up here. They need to fight for every goal possible. They'll go into the final game against Romania on Sunday with an opportunity, that's for sure, where they need to exercise a bit of damage limitation at the moment. And you can see, just a little bit flustered. Chance on the line here, and that's well put away. Chuchunek maintains his composure there. Realized he was clean through on goal. Horn tried for the intercept, just missed out. And this place is ready to erupt. 1,700 people here, just over 3% of the entire population of Faroe Islands in this hall. And they're about to celebrate a historic victory. And Ellison, oh, Shibagotu delivers another one.
I don't know how many times I've said his name today, but I'll tell you what, I'll happily say it 10 more times. Shivagurtu is having a game that everyone would have dreamed he would have today. Him and Oli Mutun, between the two of them, 37 years of age, a 17-year-old and a 20-year-old, making everyone's dreams come true here. Goriga drops the shoulder. Turchenko at long last in at left back and well showing everyone why he should have been there at the very beginning. He had a few minutes in that position early on, but then was stranded out in the right back position for the majority of this game. That's one of the big mistakes for this team, looking back on how things go. And a timeout called. Faroe Islands, seven goals up. And now all about adding a couple more before the 60 minutes are up here. Let's listen in. No matter what the result here, nothing will be decided just yet. But the way things are looking, Faroe Islands are looking very, very good for a spot. Well, the EHF Euro 2024 uh, should have come down to a three-way tie in the group. Ukraine would need to beat Romania by nine goals to overturn the goal difference for Faroe Islands. They could also get a goal or two back here. That would change things dramatically. Nice movement on the left-hand side, and referees just giving the free throw in the end. But all this talk about goal difference and points, that would to decide third place in the group. And then it's another table we look at in terms of the top four third place sides. But Faroe Islands' victory over Romania should do the job for them in that case. A shot clean over the crossbar. And the only pity from a Faroe Islands' perspective is that they're not able to officially celebrate their spot here. But we're still at a stage with this team where every victory is so, so special. It was only two years ago right here that Ukraine beat them by a single goal. Heartbreaking stuff for Faroe Islands. As I mentioned at the top of the program, there's that in-flight pass, so I'll picked up in the rebound. Oh, it's unfortunate. Well saved. And the referees seeing if that came off the head. No, it came off the shoulder. And in that case, I think it's a Faroe Islands ball, isn't it? I think the referee's not realizing that the ball went over the sideline and they're giving the ball to the keeper anyway it doesn't really matter at this stage so as I said every goal could count but these two teams in the last two years of course have gone under such ridiculously contrasting issues Ukraine we all know about and Faroe Islands have only been on the up and we've seen it here today that pass not a good one just about kept in play Goriga looking for the line oh beautifully done he creates a bit of space for himself. Uh, Dimitri Goriga delivers another one. He's been the outstanding performer for Ukraine here today. So it's a six goal lead. Faroe Islands would dearly like another one. A cherry on the icing on the cake. And also a big goal in terms of the goal difference battle. And most important for them is not to give another one away. Oh, Shepagotu cuts inside, he's clean through! Elias Ellison, oh, Shepagotu, for the umpteenth time today, delivers a moment of magic for Faroe Islands. 
Eight seconds left on the clock. One last shot, perhaps. Denisov tries to make something happen. It's saved. Rebound put away. Did it go in before the buzzer? I'm not sure it did. The referee said no, and that'll do it. 60 minutes on the clock. A huge victory for Faroe Islands in our highlight match, and what a choice it was to come here for this one. Just look at the delight on the faces of this young, young team. And the vast majority of the 1,700 people here in Torshavn celebrating what could well be. We won't know until Sunday evening, but what could well be their ticket to the EHF Euro 2024. Their first major championship as a senior.